So one of the fragrances by BDK Parfum that I've actually spoken about quite a bit on my channel is the original Gris Charnel. Now the brand has actually just come out with Gris Charnel Extrait. It's a brand new release concentrated at 30%. It's stronger, it's darker, it's smokier, and a little spicier. I'm super excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new release, so make sure to stay tuned. begin my fragrance review of Gris Charnel by BDK Parfum and I tell you all about this fragrance, how I think it stacks up in comparison to the original and the other comparisons that I can make performance, versatility, so on and so forth. I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you are a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to enable all notifications by hitting that bell and give this video a thumbs up, of course, if you take something of value from today's episode. Now, when you take a look at the note breakdown for this fragrance, you have cardamom essence, vetiver, sandalwood, cedarwood, there's vanilla, and then there's also this fig accord, with it, which I think is really, really interesting. Now, fig is a very unique note in and of itself because all fig in the perfume industry is actually a fantasy note and sometimes it can smell very creamy, lactonic, sometimes it has like this coconut-like appeal to it and so in this fragrance combining that fig nuance with the cardamom, the vetiver and some of those darker woodsier elements I think it's a really interesting composition and I think it has an overall picture that it paints that is going to appeal to the sensibilities of a lot of perfume lovers out there because there's a lot of that rich tonka bean, the vanilla. It's actually a very welcoming composition and it's one that I'm really enjoying. One thing that I have to say though is in regards to BDK Parfum fragrances, they seem to last a very long time. Even some of their lighter offerings like Citrus Riviera, I still get a decent amount of freshness into hour six, seven, and even eight on a good day. So with that being said, to take this familiar DNA and to turn it into an extra strength, that was saying a lot in terms of what I could potentially expect from the fragrance. And then application, I think painted a different picture. So I'm very excited to share my experience with you. Let's go ahead and start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you are going to get that cardamom spice. And cardamom, I suppose, is one of those ingredients that I've grown a bit more sensitive to in the sense that whenever I smell it in fragrances now, I can usually pick up on it like almost immediately. So right in the opening, you're going to get that cardamom that's in here. And it's a cardamom that kind of faintly reminds me of the cardamom appeal of something like Pegasus Exclusive by Parfum de Marly. The fragrance overall is actually quite different, but in terms of the cardamom spice melding with the sweetness of the vanilla, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Now, of, of course, and obviously this fragrance does eventually go in its own direction because you have the tonka bean, the vanilla, and then you also have that creamy fig, which is coupled with iris. So the iris that's in here, it's not overly starchy as it is in some other niche fragrances. And it also doesn't ever smell waxy or like lipstick, but it does kind of add this billowy nature to the composition. And it also adds this clean appeal in the heart, if that makes sense. After that cardamom spice in the opening, kind of starts to settle down, never fully disappears, but after it starts to settle down somewhat, that's when the sweeter property of the fragrance really come to the fore. So you get more of that vanilla, you get more of the tonka bean, and the vetiver that's in here is also quite gentle, and the green quality of the vetiver, I think, complements the cardamom really well. So what it does is it creates a bridge from the opening to the base of the fragrance to kind of add that uniformity that is always appreciated in perfumes nowadays. So it starts spicy, it transitions into something that's rather clean, billowy, 
uh, with a texture of earth in it as well. And then it dries down to this equally creamy nature on account of the sandalwood. So you'll see there's a lot of complementing components within this fragrance, the sandalwood with the fig, uh, the iris perhaps with a little bit of the vetiver, that sort of clean quality that you'll get from both. And then of course, the sweetness that you'll get from both the vanilla and the tonka bean. So one thing that I've noticed is that this fragrance has been wear very well thought out in terms of what ought to go into it. I believe the perfumer is Mathilde Bijaoui and obviously super accomplished perfumer. And with this particular fragrance, it is a darker, spicier, slightly smokier and richer version of the original. Now, what I can say in that regard is with the original Gris Charnel, I think you're going to get louder projection in the opening that evolves into something that's a little bit more on the subtle side, whereas with this one, the projection is pretty loud, but it remains consistent. And the longevity of the fragrance is also very impressive. And in terms of the aesthetic differences, you can see that this bottle is actually much darker than the original. And so if you're a fan of the original Gris Charnel, I would definitely recommend that you try check out this brand new X-Trade version of Gris Charnel. If you're a fan of some of the other BDK parfum fragrances like Rouge Smoking, or I know I mentioned Citrus Riviera, there's also Cell d'Argent, or if you're a fan of some of the darker offerings from the brand, I know um, there's a tobacco offering that I really enjoy. I think this is one that you certainly must keep on your radar because I think it embodies a lot of these qualities and characteristics that the brand has become quite known for. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, of course, this is a flanker to the original, so you are going to pick up on a similarity between the two. But as I mentioned earlier, this one is darker, richer, a bit spicier, and of course, a little bit longer lasting than the original, which of course brings us to longevity. This one, you can expect about eight to nine hours longevity, and I've even gotten 10 hours on a good day. So no slouch in the performance department. And I think the name and the concentration says a lot in that regard. Projection was great for the first two hours of application and it didn't start to sit closer to the skin until about that six to six and a half hour mark. And then it radiated within an elbow's length. So the projection and the performance overall on this fragrance is very, very good. In terms of the versatility, I think you can pretty much pull this off in every season except for the summertime. I think on account of the sweetness and the spice, for some people, it might be a little bit too much for the summer, but you can wear this one on a romantic occasion, on a formal occasion. You can wear it to casually if you if really in love with the smell. And I think this one is perfectly unisex. It'll appeal to somebody who's a little bit older on account of the spice, and it'll appeal to somebody who's a little bit younger on account of that sweetness. In terms of the presentation, I personally really enjoy it. I like how in terms of the aesthetic differences, there aren't too many differences from the original, but just enough that let you know this is the x-ray version, that's the original. So my final verdict on this fragrance is if you're a fan of the charm, the appeal, the allure of the original, if you're familiar with that spicy, sweet, and iris-like component that the original brings forth, and you're looking for something that's a little bit stronger, a little bit darker, and a little bit richer, definitely check out Gris Charnel Extra. I think it's a solid release from BDK Parfum. Super happy to have it in my collection. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed my review of Gris Charnel Extra. If you own or have tried this fragrance, let me know what you think, leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to support the channel by subscribing to it. If you took something of value from today's episode, hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I do upload future videos to this channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up. It would greatly assist with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.